This is Lyle and Hopper TV, and today we're coming to you from Costa Rica. So we're going to show you the best places to visit. Let's do it. That's right, Island Hoppers. We're going to explore 12 different areas of Costa Rica. Pretty much everything that you could possibly want to see while you're here. You have a lot of facts, so you're definitely going to want to stick around and watch this one. We're going to go to the Caribbean and the Pacific side. First up, here we are at Papagayo Peninsula. This here is in Guanacaste, which is one of the most prestigious provinces for tourists to visit while in Costa Rica. Now, it is in the northwestern part towards Nicaragua, and you will notice that many different high-end resorts are here, like Planet Hollywood. They also have a Hyatt and the Four Seasons. This here is a look at the Planet Hollywood All-Inclusive Resort. If you plan to spend a significant amount of time at a resort, then All-Inclusive is a great bargain. So we got an immersive experience. You got to put on these headphones to go watch the show. So the way the silent disco here works is you get to have all the fun with the loud music, but you don't keep all the other guests awake. So if you're one of those people who plans to go to sleep early, this kind of silent disco works really good because you don't have to hear blaring music while you're trying to sleep, but everyone else who wants to party and dance can still do so. There's also rockin' parties at the beach in the daytime, so it's a really fun place here at the Planet Hollywood, but consider the Hyatt or Four Seasons. Now here we are in a town called Pacifico. This beach is called Cocos Playa, or Playa del Cocos. Being that it sits on the Pacific Ocean side of Costa Rica, you can expect the beaches to be white sand, but not like you will get on the Caribbean side. Now, if you wanted to arrive here in Papagayo, you would land at Liberia Airport. To get down to Papagayo is about 35 to 40 minutes by car. So keep that in mind when choosing to visit here. Now there are several beach areas south of Papagayo like Cocos Beach and several others. This is all going to be many different beaches all the way down to Las Catalinas and then you come into the southern part of Guanacaste. Now at Las Catalinas, there are several resorts here at Las Catalinas that may be interesting to you, but if you check out Playa Danita, this area right here, you can walk around. Playa Portrero, it's more of a relaxing vibe than you're gonna get in other places across Costa Rica. So consider this whole area of Guanacaste. It's really a popular place with foreigners. Another area that I would suggest checking out is Playa Flamingo. So you've got lots of options here in this area. Now we're actually headed south a bit. We're going to Tamarindo. The nickname for Tamarindo is Tamagringo. No pun intended. Hopefully no one gets offended by that. It's just a fun nickname that the locals have given to Tamarindo because there are so many foreigners here. So now here we are at Playa Longasta. This is actually on the other side of Tamarindo Beach. And let me flip the camera around here. You can see lots of beach action over here. A lot less people. They've got some condos over here and some resort style living occidentals over here. See, they got professional massage, but trees, really a beautiful place here. So I just showed you Playa Longasta, which is a lot more relaxed. Now we're just gonna walk around Tamarindo here. This is where most of the people hang out, do beach activities, uh, go out on sunset cruises, go out and do some uh, tours around the surrounding beaches. Just a nice area to hang out. So this is a look at the beach on Tamarindo. If you do surfing or if you ever wanted to learn how to do surfing, this is probably where you want to go. There's a couple places in Costa Rica that are special for surfing, the other one being Jaco, but Tamarindo is a great place to learn. All right, so from Tamarindo, we're actually going to go even further. This time we're headed to the Nicoya Peninsula. Check out some beaches and some of the popular towns. Now I'm in Playa Ostonio. Big old beach here. Here we are now at the beaches of Nasara. Now, 
They say Nosara is like how Tamarindo was 10 to 15 years ago. So it's a bit harder to get to because it's a bit further south, about an hour away. But people are starting to migrate down here. So if you're looking for something a little bit more tame than Tamarindo, you might just like the area around Nosara. They've got lots of beaches here in this whole region. We're even gonna go further south to Samara. So this whole area right here is some of the most up and coming parts of Costa Rica. Now here we are in Samara, this beautiful town in the northern part of Nicoya. Now if you ask me which one I prefer more, Nosara or Samara, I'm gonna go with Samara, just because there's so much more in the area that I really like. Also, if you go a little bit further south, you will see wild parrots just flying around. And I really enjoy being in a place like that. I stayed at a Marriott down there at Punta Islita, and that was just awesome. So that was about 30 minutes south of Samara. Lots of dirt roads out here, so it's not as developed. And again, if you wanted to actually get here, the best airport to arrive into is going to be Liberia. If you came in from San Jose, it would probably take you three or four hours. They do have smaller commuter regional airports, but I would say still, Liberia is probably your best bet. I actually rented a car at the Liberia airport, and then I was just driving all across Nicoya and around the Punta Arenas area. Now here we are south of Samara. This is Playa Islita. So like I said, I stayed at the Marriott here. This was the Punta Islita Marriott, if you wanted to also look for this one. Really remote out here in the jungles. Howler monkeys were here, wild parrots. Really a great experience. So check this one out. Now the next morning, what I ended up doing was taking the dirt road all the way down to Santa Teresa. And I'm gonna show you what I came across while doing this, like Playa Coyote and so many others. Now the interesting thing about this is there is some river crossings that can be a bit challenging. Thankfully, uh, there wasn't anything too strong, but keep that in mind if and when it's rainy season. But you can see they were having a Caballero Festival at Playa Coyote. Well, after quite a crazy ride, about two and a half to three hours from Samara or Islitas, I've arrived in Playa Hermosa, just outside of Santa Teresa. Good morning from Santa Teresa Beach, the surfing capital of Costa Rica. Yeah, Santa Teresa is another one of those places to do surfing. There's also some places on the Caribbean side. Well, after a long drive, I have arrived. Nice hotel here. I'm trying to get the AC to work correctly though. I had to wash my feet, so I've already kind of been here for about half an hour. I was like, you know what? I better make a video before I really settle in. Oop. little patio here cool all right Santa Teresa Beach sunsets surfing waterfalls and some really unique nighttime vibes you'll find here in the jungles around Santa Teresa now remember the Nicoya Peninsula is one of the blue zones in the world there's only five and Nicoya is one of them that's a place where people live to be 100 years or older more often than other places around the world. So this is my breakfast. This is a traditional American breakfast, I would say. Santa Teresa is known for its bohemian vibe, so you will see a lot of people from Europe hanging out here. Uh, it's become a popular place with people from over there they really seem to migrate and gravitate towards Santa Teresa. Well, half of the town here in Santa Teresa is uh, dirt road still. So I'm gonna head over towards uh, the other part of the Nicoya 
and the south part, which is going to be like Montezuma. But I wanted to stop here at the beach in the morning and just show you what Santa Teresa looks like in the mornings. Another way to get around the dirt roads here in Santa Teresa in the southern part of Nicoya is one of these all-terrain vehicles uh, side by side. So I would suggest considering getting one of these because, you know, the dirt roads, it handles better. It's a little bit more equipped for this region. But once you go down from Santa Teresa to Montezuma, it takes around 35 minutes, maybe an hour, uh, just depending on traffic. But yeah, I would definitely recommend going down here to Montezuma. From here, you can also access a lot of places in the Golfo right there, uh, including Isla Tortuga. They also have a national park down here called Cabo Blanco, which we'll be showing you right now. They also have this hanging canopy bridge where they have several different waterfalls. Like I said, this Montezuma area really is impressive. And if you ask me which one I prefer, Santa Teresa or Montezuma, I'm gonna say Santa Teresa has more infrastructure, probably better hotels, but Montezuma, just the vibes down here are really amazing. So definitely worth checking out. It's really close to Santa Teresa if you just wanna do a day trip down here. By the way, if you guys are enjoying this video, consider subscribing to the channel, liking the video as we continue to show you Costa Rica. This is a really remote part of Costa Rica. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's so many different remote parts of Costa Rica where you can really find peace and relaxation along the coastline. But Montezuma is one of those places where you can really chill out and relax and find eco resorts just totally out there off grid, immersed with the locals, still at a hotel. Also down here in Montezuma, they do have turtle releases where they hatch the turtles and then they release the little babies out into the ocean. That's fun. That happens around sunset. You'll have to check if they're going to be doing that when you're there. I don't know the exact schedule. I think it varies. Also, they have a bit more nightlife that I like down here in Montezuma. It might not be for everyone, but for me, it was better. Also, they had a lot of lobsters and seafood fresh catches here that I didn't see in Santa Teresa. Yeah, so what we're going to do now is we're actually going to show you around the Cabo Blanco uh, National Park area. Here in Cabo Blanco, they have a hike. Make sure you get the hours right because they close a bit um, early. They have different openings and stuff. So make sure you pay attention to that before coming all the way down here. But when you're in Cabo Blanco, be ready to see lots of different wildlife. You never know what you'll see out here. Lots of howler monkeys though. Now, like I said, there is a really cool island that's nearby Montezuma, and you can take a high-speed boat tour from here, which takes about 45 minutes to get to Tortuga Island. And I would say this is probably the most beautiful island in Costa Rica, right here at the tip of the Nicoya Peninsula. So definitely add this to your list of things to do when in Santa Teresa or Montezuma. Well, one thing I will say about this part of the Nicoya on the south, there's a very nice paved road. I haven't seen any potholes on this. The paved road in between Santa Teresa and Montezuma had a lot of potholes, but once you get past Montezuma, it seems like the road has a lot uh, smoother ride. This here is called Balina Bay or Bahia Balina. Balina in Spanish is uh, whale. big beach faces towards Hako. You can see Hako out over there. It's Punta Reynas. Some new rivers here. It's called Tambor. But yeah. The 
this is where you can drive your car onto the actual boat. Some beautiful views here. Just got hit at a checkpoint. Uh, police pulled me over and searched my car for no reason other than the fact that I was driving on the road. <laughs> so I was surprised about that because I hadn't seen that in Costa Rica before. Yeah, they just pulled me over to the side, searched my entire car looking for something, found nothing, but uh, I was like, what is going on here? Because there was no probable cause to stop me other than the fact that I was driving in the car. <laughs> I had my license, my passport, and everything, so there you go. Here we are going across Tempieza, or Rio, Colorado. You see the big bridge here? All right, on the way to Monte Verde here, we're off Highway 1, and we're going through a town called Las Hundas. And this is about an hour and a half away from Monte Verde. Let's see, Las Hundas. We are now at the top of the mountains on our way to Monte Verde. Very high up here and lots of wind, but it's much cooler up here than down below. Wow looking down towards the Golfo of Nicoya. But look at that, wow, beautiful, huh? Yeah, so here we are with a great view, this Mirador, this lookout point. Actually, someone's building a house here, but you can see the Gulf of Nicoya down there. Lots of fires going on because here in January, it's actually considered their summer because winter starts from May until November. So it's a dry season, lots of fires going down there. Well, it's about lunchtime, so we're gonna stop at Cafe Horizonte. Let's see what they got going on in here. There's Posado right here. All right, this is called the A-frame house here. Got an upstairs. So it's a two bedroom. It's perfect. And then you step outside, you've got a jacuzzi, which I'll be firing up here in a minute. And while in Monteverde, what I ended up doing was a nighttime jungle safari hike. Doing a night walk. This is called the Kinkajau. Nocturnal night walk starting at 5.30. It's $33 a person. Let's go see what's in here. Right before the night walk, we got a rainbow. Look at that. Joaquin gave me a flashlight. So while I was out here, I did see a kinkajou. I also saw a toucan that was sleeping. Several other birds of paradise animals that you would see out here. Also a frog and a little snake uh, along with a tarantula. So you never know what kind of creatures are out here, but you'll definitely see some animals. Uh, here in Monte Verde, beautiful. So here we are at the Salvatore Adventure Park where they have the canopy walk. They also have the sloth sanctuary, the butterfly garden. We're gonna go check out some of the activities here. Let's go inside. So the price to visit the sloth sanctuary alone is going to be $39, but if you wanted to see the butterfly garden and some of of the other activities that they have here, you can bundle them together. It just depends what you wanna see. So if you wanna see Sloth Sanctuary and Butterfly Garden, it's $79 per person for a 90 minute tour. In Spanish, a butterfly is called a mariposa, in case you didn't know that, now you do. But here they actually do have cocoons, although the butterflies here cannot actually hatch because it's illegal in Costa Rica to actually have the hatchery as well as the uh, butterflies in the same place. So they have to actually import the butterflies and then they have to get rid of these cocoons. They can't actually hatch the uh, caterpillar into a butterfly here at this sanctuary. Interesting fact, right? So after you actually go into the uh, butterfly sanctuary, then you can go check out the sloths. 
I actually really enjoyed seeing all these sloths. In case you're wondering where they get the sloths, well, they're usually animals that have been injured in the wild. Uh, maybe they've been injured by a car, a motorbike, or by another animal. Some of them are blind. Uh, so, you know, you never know what kind of accident happened to one of these sloths, but that's why they're here. And they can't be released back into the wild. And the reason I bring this up is because people do want to know that. Another thing that's popular to do in Monteverde is these hanging bridge hikes. Also, they have a frog zoo or a frog exhibit that you can check out. So many different activities in Monteverde, but the big thing is it's just a very beautiful cloud forest here. Now from Monteverde, I'm actually headed to La Fortuna. And along the way here, you can see they've got these uh, giant windmills which are covered in <laughs> what appears to be some algae or moss maybe mold but yeah just uh cruising to la fortuna now it's been raining so i couldn't really film anything but the rain has kind of slowed down a bit as i've gotten towards la fortuna um going away from the coast even more now but it's very beautiful out here as you can see, I'm at Lake Arenal now. Very windy here. They have windsurfing, as you would imagine. Wow. It's like the water level's low because it's dry season. That drive from Monteverde to La Fortuna takes about two and a half hours. So as you can see on this route, so far we've gone from Liberia, we landed, went to Papagayo, then went down to Nicoya, then crossed over from Nicoya to Monteverde and now we're into La Fortuna. So you guys are getting an idea of how this route would go. Now, even though it was very dry in Guanacaste, in particular around Nicoya and Papagayo, where it was dry season, up here it was raining pretty much off and on all day. So Costa Rica has a lot of microclimates. Well, we're officially very close to Arenal. La Fortuna is known for Eco Termales, which is these hot springs. Excuse me, meet me. Human coming through. Now this particular hot spring hotel was called Kokoro Mineral Springs and the hotel villa was around $125 per night. Now there are several different Eco Termales uh, hot spring areas that you can hang out. Not all of them are hotels and you can actually pay the entrance fee to go see some of these beautiful ones that are world famous. So here I am now at Eco Termales, beautiful clear hot spring. Now at Colombo Hot Springs. But while here in La Fortuna, you can also do uh, whitewater rafting and canoeing, which is very popular, tour a chocolate farm. They have the sloths here as well. So doing a hike up Arenal Volcano or doing a tour around there, lots to do, even the lake. Now let's just do a quick recap of where we're at in this journey. So I would say here in La Fortuna, plan for about two to three days. Monteverde, you could do it in 24 hours, but I would suggest 48 hours. Nicoya, I would say spend around five days that begins in Nosara. And then if you wanted to do Papagayo, I would say two to three days there should be fine. So as you can see, just to do this route, you're probably gonna need about 10 to 14 days. However, if you're on a time crunch and all you wanna see is a lot of places, you can really do about one to two days in each one of these places and you don't have to really relax you can move pretty quickly and you could probably do this trip in about seven days and the good news is from la fortuna you can get to liberia's airport in about three hours or you could get to san jose's airport in about three hours so either way you're close to both main airports got some lava rock chicken right here oh my gosh Fortuna and I'm actually headed towards San Jose but in between there is going to be a place called Poaz Volcano 
which is actually where I'm uh, looking to stop at the lookout point. So we'll see if I can get there on time. And now we're climbing the mountain. This is the mountain to get to San Jose. Uh, Poaz Volcano is nearby, so it'll take 25 kilometers, which is gonna take around an hour. Oh, wow. Wow, look at that. Well, it looks like we're almost to the top, and there was clouds on the way up, but once you get to the top, it's above the clouds. That's cool. Basically at the top of the mountain here, um, for six kilometers, I'll drive this road. This is a national park. Oh, it's chilly up here. There's some big mountains. Well, I came all the way from La Fortuna to Poaz Volcano, and I got denied because I don't have a reservation. So if Poaz Volcano was something you wanted to see, you need a reservation. The guy said that it probably isn't the best time anyway because it's cloudy, but I'm assuming it's always cloudy over here, so not a very good situation for me. I came all the way over here for this. <laughs> it's all good. Either way, once you cross over the mountain where Poaz is and other volcanoes, you end up looking down towards San Jose. So you've crossed a ridge. The other side is La Fortuna, and on this side we have San Jose and the valley. officially headed down the mountain here. Quickly losing altitude. Now from San Jose here, now once you get to San Jose, obviously you're in the capital, so it's gonna be the metropolis of the Costa Rican uh, country. Here you're gonna find lots of traffic and it's not so easy to drive a rental car around San Jose, as le at least not as easy as it is going around in the countryside. Uh, so keep that in mind. There is a central area to San Jose and then if you stay outside of there You're in Alhuela, which is one of the more popular areas for hotels So I would say plan for about 24 hours in San Jose no matter what Now just some population statistics to share with you the city of San Jose has around 350,000 but if you include the metro area of San Jose, it's around 2.5 million all of Costa Rica has around 5.1 million people here. So it's a pretty small country uh, in terms of size and also in terms of population. Although with so many different areas to explore, Costa Rica feels a lot bigger, even though it's very condensed. Now the second biggest city in Costa Rica is called Cartago. We're actually not gonna go there, but it's about an hour drive away from uh, San Jose and it's south. Now from San Jose, you either have a choice. You can go towards the Caribbean side or you can go towards the Pacific side. In this case, what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna go towards Haco, very briefly stop through there. And that's where we're gonna go towards Manuel Antonio right after that. But before we do that, I'm gonna give you a little tour of the Hilton Doubletree here in San Jose in case you're looking for a hotel. The prices do vary depending on supply and demand. You could get it for around $220 a night, but this is what it looks like, nice resort right here in San Jose. But yeah, let's head down towards Haco, which is about an hour and a half away. Here they're gonna have a casino. It's actually one of the main party towns. I don't spend too much time here, but if you wanted to stop by for lunch, that would be great. Although some people spend their whole time in Costa Rica in Haco. Now about an hour north of Haco, there is some interesting wildlife activities you can do like going out on a crocodile uh, tour. Cause as you know, they do have big crocodiles here. And one of these places you can go is to Rio Tarcoles. So they have boat trips you can do right here. And I would say this is about 35 to 40 minutes north of Haco. They also have the famous Crocodile Bridge. 
All right, so from Hako, we're gonna go south. This time we're in Manuel Antonio. Now, Manuel Antonio is known as probably the premier place for wildlife spotting. You're gonna have three different types of monkeys here. Also, you'll see uh, several different types of sloths. So there is two species of sloths that are wild here. Uh, there's the two-toe and the three-toe sloth. Although I think here in Manuel Antonio, you only see one of those because one is in Monteverde, which is different than the one that's in the lower lands. So take that into consideration. But in Manuel Antonio, it's really an amazing place. And people like to go to that uh, airplane restaurant. And now if you go south a bit from Manuel Antonio, you come to Uvita, which is known as the whale's tail because it's a rock formation that extends out into the ocean in the shape of a whale. But the interesting thing is they actually do get a lot of whales that are down here and that's why they call it the Belina. So Belina in uh, Spanish means whale and that's why they call it that. But it's Belina State Park, National Park area. So definitely do explore around Uvita. They also have these waterfalls out here, nice hotel resorts. We did glamping while we were here. I do recommend doing some glamping in Costa Rica just because it's more of an immersive experience in the jungle. And here is a look at the Bolina State Park that you go out to. It is an admission fee that does have to be paid per car or per person. Uh, that price varies. You would want to look that up online before you go there, but it's not a lot. It's just something you have to pay in order to access. And this is a look at cassado, which is a traditional Costa Rican dish, usually served for lunch or dinner. But the word cassado translates to married basically marrying a variety of different foods, includes rice, also plantains, some form of egg or a meat, and yeah, that's cassada. Here in Dominic Hall, you can see we had parrots. Good close up with the parrots. You can hear them from a distance. Now from the Pacific side, we're gonna explore a little bit around the Caribbean side. We didn't have much time to explore Caribbean because it's on the other side, but it doesn't mean that it's not worth being explored. This here is Porto Viejo. The interesting thing, if you go a little bit further south, you're in Bocos del Toro. Above here is gonna be a place like Cahuita, and then the main city on the Caribbean is Limon. Most people suggest just passing through there. If you wanted to go a little bit further north of here, you would come to a place that's called uh, Tortuga National Park, or Tortuguero, I should say. And they say it's very beautiful there. So lots to see on the Caribbean side here. So to do a full trip like this in Costa Rica, where you actually include the actual Caribbean, you're looking at around two weeks minimum, and that's moving quite quickly. If you wanted to actually chill in places like La Fortuna, maybe Manuel Antonio, or even Nicoya for a little bit longer, then you're looking at around three weeks to possibly a month. The good news is you're going to get a long-term visa i believe it's 180 days don't quote me on that because the writing in the passport wasn't very clear but it looked like a 180 and i looked online and it said 180 uh, so you will have enough time uh, the trick here is getting the rental car and doing it alone uh, like this if you did a tour it might be a lot more efficient i guess you could say but i don't know if it's going to be uh, your speed especially if you're with a family but if you're with a family, rental car is probably the best way to go. So as you can see, the Caribbean side is a little bit different vibe. They've got these tuk-tuks. Uh, they don't have those on the Pacific side, at least not that I saw. But either way, really an awesome country. As you can see, I highly recommend Costa Rica. Try to at least do seven to 10 days your first time. If you really want to do this tour and see it as much as we did, this is almost everything. The only thing we didn't include was Corcovado in the south of the Pacific and Quetzal in the middle of the country, as well as some of the other volcanoes. But we really included most of the main things that you would need to see. And if you enjoyed this one, you can also watch our Panama City, Panama video, as well as our Belize video. So we'll see you on those next.